What's up guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about modifications to my Audi R8. It's gonna be me on the uh, on the camera on the G7X, uh, purely because Cole is a little bit ill and I'm gonna be going on a trip in a bit, so he's going to be missing the first half of, half of the trip. It's gonna be me and the camera, just us like this, and then he's gonna join back to help with the filming. But, to talk about the R8, I think it's probably wise that we head down to the car park to actually see the car, so I can show you what I'm what I'm thinking. And here she is. I think this car's beautiful, honestly. Grows on me the more and more I see it. I really like it. Sorry for the annoying noise that may be coming from there. But yeah, I think this angle is the angle, the classic RA angle, where you can see these widened um, entrances here on the side blades for the V10. And you've obviously got the V10 plus wheels. It's filthy, like driving in the UK in winter is impossible. This car isn't particularly clean now and I've cleaned it twice in the last week. Um, so yeah, if you're driving in the UK in the winter, you just have to accept that your car's gonna be pretty filthy. Anyways, I'm gonna move it so that we can talk about it properly without that sound. And also I can show you around it. So I need to just find somewhere in the car park where there's not an annoying noise. You see that? Isn't that so sick, the way the uh, indicators kind of like gradually go from left to right. I love that. Right, it's gonna be tight here, however. Uh-oh. Right, the first thing we're gonna talk about today is this. The noise. Cold start, it actually sounds quite nice already. They haven't come to fix the um, EPC light yet, which is a bit annoying. So, yes, the exhausts, those things, um, currently not much volume being produced by them, um, so that must change. So, yeah, let's talk about that, first of all, let's talk about the exhaust system. I'm very, very, very happy to say that I have actually ordered an exhaust system for this car. Uh, it's going to be arriving, I think early to mid-December, probably more mid-December by the time uh, we get it fitted and stuff like that. Um, so the car, I did say if you guys voted on my French video that I would have the exhaust on before the end of this year. So that's all been done. I've managed to finally decide which exhaust and I'll tell you more at the end of the video. I want to run through the uh, different modifications one by one and then I'll tell you about the exhaust because that's the only one that's properly confirmed for now. So, exhaust was the first. So that is kind of already sorted in terms of I've ordered a system, let's see what that's like and then you know we'll take it from there but I think it's going to sound absolutely nuts. We've obviously done the plate and we found the tracker fitted which unfortunately brought up the EPC light but nothing, nothing important at all, uh, nothing that really affects the car. Now, the next changes. So because this car has that right there, I don't know if you can see, manual gearbox means it's very rare. So one of seven in the UK, V10 pluses. Therefore, I don't wanna like do anything that's going to be irreversible on the car. I wanna always keep the changes to, to, to something that I can put back to stock. So I don't wanna put like a Liberty Walk kit on it. I think it would be too much to be honest. I wanna keep it <laughs> almost, I, I can already hear your comments coming in like classic YouTuber, exhaust, etc. But I think it, that makes it really cool. You can personalize your car. So, currently I actually love the way it looks, but it's a little bit too bland for me, maybe. Uh, the grey with the silver wheels, I really, really like these wheels, but I'm also thinking I might as well conserve these, because I want to drive the car a lot, they can just get general wear and tear on them. Um, so, because these are really nice, these are the original V10 Plus wheels and they've just been refurbed, they're like in perfect condition. One thing I kind of want to do, is get new rims for this car. Now, the first reason is obviously why I just mentioned about keeping the, um, keeping the car kind of uh, original pieces intact, but also there's quite a, a large gap here, and I think the wheels are just a bit too small. I don't know if you can see that, or if it's just me, but I feel like they don't fill out the wheel arches just enough. So I think we can go up, um, you know, to, to an inch or two more on the wheels. Now, I don't know the details of that, I haven't looked into it yet. Um, I've been talking to a couple of companies who are keen to, to do something. Uh, but yeah, I think that would be a really cool 
addition to the to the look of the car some new wheels so I don't know yet you know do I want to go on like a crazy color with white rims do I want to do gold rims like I did on the Lotus black rims I'm not sure so that's why I'm making this video because I kind of want you guys to give me your perspective and what you think I should do um, but the, the wheels I think definitely need to change um, so that's gonna happen at some point so first step is the exhaust then the wheels so let's do all the exterior stuff then we can talk about the interior so yes wheels will be changed I think I'll leave the calipers the way they are because I like how they've got Audi ceramic on them I'm not going to change the color of the cal calipers but I do want to wrap the car at some point uh, for two reasons one to kind of give it a second life new color and secondly because I'm going to be driving it a lot I really want to just protect the paintwork uh, especially around front so yeah that's the second reason for having the wrap on the car yeah I don't know which color yet you know do I do all black black wheels black windows obviously windows is something else I'm gonna do tinted windows um, but do do I want to do all black do I want to do you know red with gold again do I want to do baby blue with white wheels do I go full Stradman spec and go purple with white wheels I don't know um, you know, I don't mind doing anything that's been done before. I don't really care about being like the first to have some crazy spec, but I am also willing to experiment in terms of the colors outside itself. But then I think it will be really cool from the outside. I think for now, at least that's all I'll do. Uh, the other things I'm considering is you can get these like canards that you don't actually have to drill holes in the bumper, um, which you can just put on, put off. And that might be quite cool once the wraps on to get those. And then a rear wing, I quite like it without the rear wing. And I, again, I don't want to get anything that I would need to drill holes in. So if I can find a solution to maybe try out a wing, which you know I can then you know put back the original stock look afterwards, that would be brilliant. But I think that new wheels, new exhaust, new wrap, canards, and potentially wing would make this car really cool. And then the brilliant thing is I can then take it off, put these original wheels back on, and the car is ready to be sold for probably more than if it had all the modifications. So that's quite cool. That's my thinking behind that. And that's just me trying to be completely open. It's probably not the like class YouTuber way of doing it because usually we'll like make it a massive surprise and stuff. But um, yeah, I, I, I just want to share it with you and I really want to get your input in this car. I'm really thinking of this as like our car that we modified together. So I'm going to have you guys vote on all the different modifications in terms of the wheels, the wrap color, all that stuff so that we decide together. So that's the exterior. Now, interior. So, I really like the interior spec on this. It's very simple, but it's got everything that you that you kind of want. If the camera bloody focuses. Okay, there we go. It's got everything that you want. So it's got the Bang & Olufsen, um, so that there's no need to upgrade the sound system in this because it's a really, really good sound system. It's got all the carbon. So again, no need to add carbon, I feel. Let me see if there's, you know, the lights are on. I'll get my flash out for you guys. Okay, so you see it's got all the carbon there. It's got carbon around the steering wheel. Um, yeah, really nice spec. Now, the first big thing, these seats. They are incredibly comfortable, brilliant for road trips, but I just think they're, they're just quite boring. They're the seats you can get in an Audi TT, basically. And um, I don't know, I feel like if I have it looking crazy outside, I want to change those and do something. And again, there is the reason of look how perfect this seat is. So the, the, the driver's one, the driver one, sorry, it's got a bit of wear and tear. Um, but because this was mostly driven on a commute by a man going to work, um, yeah, the passenger seat did not get much wear and tear. So like I could save this seat again, save the condition of this seat. I'm thinking of replacing these with like full-blown buckets, like full Alcantara bucket seats. I'm just looking right now to see which are the most comfortable that we could replace these with. But that's one change I've kind of decided I really want to do. And I think it will change the aesthetic of the interior and make the car just a lot more sporty. Uh, the other thing, let me go to the other side, the steering wheel. Again, I think it looks a little bit outdated. I just think the leather's quite thin on it, the perforated leather. And the middle, I don't know if you can tell there, the center of the steering wheel is plastic. And I'm, anyways, just not a massive fan. So I saw back when John Olsen, or Ewan Olsen, I guess, uh, uh, had um, his R8, he changed the interior completely. He'd put bucket seats and he'd done a new interior, like a steering wheel, and he put Alcantara everywhere, and he went fully hardcore with it. 
thought it was really cool. I've spoken to him about it a bit. And um, yeah, apparently the steering wheel changes a lot. So I, I'm very tempted to change the steering wheel to something Alcantara, carbon, uh, all that jazz. But again, what I would do is probably buy another R8 steering wheel, modify that one, put that on, and then keep the original one um, somewhere, like store that so that I can again go all the way back to original, which I know doesn't make sense because I know all these changes are really cool and we car guys kind of think that they should add value but on for some reason on cars like this original is gold so that's what i'm thinking now for the interior originally i was like oh, i want to go like crazy with it and you know do alcantara roof lining alcantara on the dash there because the the there sorry i've got the flash at the same time over there the material that they've used is this stuff there. I don't know if you can see and it's a little bit plasticky. I'm not gonna lie So originally I kind of really wanted to do that But that's too big of a job and too hard to put back after to original so that's probably not going to happen But yeah, I think it, like imagine If we did that so wrap wheels exhaust canards potentially wing sport bucket seats and a nice Alcantara carbon steering wheel tinted windows yeah, I don't think I'll lower it because I actually quite like the the ride height. It's quite convenient. And also that it kind of can ruin the way the car behaves a little bit. So that's what I'm thinking with it now. If you think I've left anything out, I mean, obviously you've, you've gathered that I would like to be able to put the car back to original. So nothing that's like, um, you know, too nuts. Uh, engine wise, I haven't thought of much. I mean, you know, obviously you can twin turbo these, you can do all that stuff. I'm, I'm daily driving it, so I I'm, don't really want a twin turbo. ECU and stuff I'd maybe be open to, so we'll see. And I know there's like uh, verbal tunes you can do so that the car like starts popping and, and doing all these cracks and stuff. So that, that sort of stuff I would consider. Yeah, that's how I feel about the car right now. Uh, let me know what you think. At least now you know exactly the way we're heading. I don't know when all of these changes will happen. The exhaust obviously is happening soon. Oh yeah, of course, I need to tell you about the exhaust. Sorry, I completely forgot. I said I would say that at the end of the video. I've got all of the details here. So it's not gonna be a massive surprise, but the sound will be, because I've actually never really heard one with this exhaust system on. So it should be quite interesting. The exhaust I have ordered is called the Zen Rage Performance Exhaust Catback System. It's a three in one. Now, I obviously have done a lot of research on this, but I don't wanna mess anything up, so I've got some writing here. So it's a full Inconel system for uh, the R8. Um, it's gonna be very, very loud apparently, and I'm gonna have three modes, so it's coming with a valve. As I mentioned, I wanna drive this car a lot. So it's got uh, three modes, so Zen Rage exhaust, then that's the name of the modes as well. So you've got Zen, which is valves closed, where the car is super quiet. Uh, I've seen systems they've made for other Audis and stuff like that, and there's a massive difference. That's what made me really wanna work with these guys because um, the difference there is between their Zen mode and their Rage mode when the exhaust is, is open is really big. And on a few other brands, sometimes you can't really tell that much of the difference. And, that's really important because I really do want to be able to cruise with this on the motorway, be completely chilled, no droning, like just nothing like that on, on, the, on the motorway. But then when I open the valve for it to be absolutely nuts. So it's got the Zen mode, quiet mode, rage mode, loud mode. And then it's got automatic where it's kind of like, you know, you have on Ferraris where it'll open at 3000 RPM. So it'll be close, close, close. And then as soon as you go over 3000, valves open becomes really loud to be honest i'll probably only use the zen and the red rage modes the most um, because those are the ones that you can kind of you know have a good time with and the automatic one if i want the valves closed i'll just leave them closed because i'm on the motorway so um, yeah i mean i may use it maybe i'll end up getting getting the exhaust in the car and realize that's actually the best mode but yeah that's the exhaust i've ordered um it has been built and it is being shipped already so that's why i'm saying hopefully i just need to figure out i don't know if i'm taking this car to monaco uh, leaving it in london like i just need to see exactly um what i'm gonna do with it and how i'm gonna organize myself there so yeah anyways that is the r8 those are the changes i'm looking to do with it i hope you guys enjoyed this video found it informative and i hope you're as excited as i am to hear it with the exhaust because trust me this naturally aspirated v10 this one right here when you let it loose sounds absolutely nuts so this original stock system 
is a real shame. And I mean, of course, they have to do it for emissions and all of that stuff. But I just think that this car needs to be opened up properly. And uh, I think my neighbors maybe won't agree, but hey ho. Anyways, thanks for watching this. Uh, thank you for the support uh, on, on, the, on the latest videos. And as I've said for a while now, it's so good to be back on the English channel, making more videos and being able to share this experience with you guys, which still feels beyond surreal. So thank you so much. Love you guys so much. See you very soon. Subscribe if you aren't already and give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, if you're excited for the changes, little thumbs up does genuinely really help the channel. So cheers, see you soon. Bye-bye.